Hey guys, welcome back. Let me make sure I have my mic on. Okay, that should be recording. So I sat down to edit my video and realized that there was no sound for the entire introduction. So here we are, take two. I always hate when this happens because I will usually like do my hair or at least brush my hair or do something or put on a little makeup for at least filming the introduction, but I'm not going through all that because it's editing day and reading day. So we're here to actually choose the second prompt from the TBR basket. If you've missed the first video in this series, I had made a TBR jar with every book on my shelves that I haven't read yet. But we're switching it up this year because this year I decided to do my local library's reading challenge where there are 116 prompts. So I've put all of the prompts in a basket. Unfortunately, you cannot hear the choosing ceremony, but the prompt was to read a book that was written by multiple authors. The book that I chose for this was The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Daniel Page. And we're just going to go ahead and read through the summary of the book that's on Goodreads. At first glance, the sisters of ultra-exclusive Kappa Rho Nu, the Ravens, seem like typical sorority girls, ambitious, beautiful, and smart. They're the most powerful girls on Westerly College's Savannah, Georgia campus, but the Ravens aren't just regular sorority girls. They're witches. Scarlet Winter has always known she was a witch, and she's determined to be the sorority's president. But if a painful secret from her past ever comes to light, she could lose absolutely everything. Vivi Devereaux has no idea she's a witch, and she's never lived in one place long enough to make a friend. So when she gets a coveted bid to pledge the Ravens, she vows to do whatever it takes to be a part of the magical sisterhood. The only thing standing in her way is Scarlet, who doesn't think Vivi is Raven's material. But when a wicked power arises on campus, the girls will have to put their rivalry aside to save their fellow sisters. Okay. I guess that's the end of the introduction. Let's go ahead and get into the rest of the vlog. All right, I started the Ravens. Sorry, that light's bad. I started the Ravens. I'm 23 pages in. I'm just starting into chapter three and I can tell this book is gonna be really fun. So far, I really like the character building. It looks like we're going to be alternating chapters from Vivi's perspective to another girl named Scarlet. Scarlet is established. She's trying to be president. She's from a rich, wealthy family. Vivi is like opposite of her. She's going to be brand new to school. She's a new rush. She is also poor. Her mom is pretty eccentric. She spends her time telling fortunes to people to earn enough money to pay for things, which is not a lot. <laughs> Um, Vivi, while her mom is very much into like premonitions or feelings, she feels like this new school Waverly is gonna be really bad. Um, but Vivi's like, Mom, you know, I don't believe in that stuff. It's gonna be fine. She draws her tarot card, and there's like, of course, it's the death card. Vivi's like, Mom, everything's gonna be fine. It's just a change, and you know, yeah, like basically, it's gonna be fine. So, uh, I am really liking this. So she's actually going to be a new rush to the sorority Kappa New. Kappa something new. They are also an elite sorority of witches. So that's how you get chosen into it is you are a witch. So the way that they actually end up choosing is like they do like a standard rush. But then I think they do. I'm not really sure. But they have some magical way that is going to end up choosing the girl based on how much magic the girl possesses and even if like they're not showing how much even if they don't seem like a very magical person sometimes they have more magic in them they just haven't tapped into yet so obviously Vivi's gonna be the new rush I oh I never really said this either I actually I actually really do enjoy stories about sorority life because I just feel like yeah I actually really do enjoy stories about like sorority life and stuff like that so but to top it off like the writing so far is really good too and like your characters are not and the characters seem like they're gonna be pretty solid characters but unfortunately I cannot keep staying up to read as much as I want to I have got to go to bed I decided to have a lot of fun I'm going to my friend's house for her son's birthday party and I want to 
dress like our other friend. I actually really love his style. He loves anime and he wears like a lot of like kind of statement pieces, like a lot of bright colors. He has a lot of unique pieces that are like anime stuff and he kind of has a signature black vest. He wears it everywhere and I love that. When I noticed it was a, um, it's a Mortal Instruments vest. I about died when I saw that. I was like, this is so cool. And it has, it has the angelic rune symbol on the snaps or on the buttons and it has like straps and stuff like that and he's like uh it's so when I it was like when I first met him too I was like hey by the way when you pass away you need to leave me your vest and it's like we kind of have this this whole fun like brother sister kind of camaraderie going on and we joke around and razz each other a lot anyways we were hanging out yesterday and I just I was going to sleep last night I was thinking oh my gosh how funny would it be if I showed up dressed like him and let's see how close one of the things when i picture dustin i picture this bright orange color and i don't really have anything orange but i do i recently acquired a bright orange shirt it's not the same type of orange but it's gonna work for this first things first bright orange shirt i recently acquired this shirt for uh pre-signups for district tournament so i was like looking at this shirt and I was like holy cow that is a neon pylon I will never wear that shirt I have a use for this shirt now so bright orange shirt I found this thrifted and when I saw it I was like oh my god that's like Dustin's vest so we have black vest this is not as cool as his but I still am, I'm still in love with this this is like one of my newest favorite pieces and I really haven't worn it out yet so we have this he also wears kind of like loose fitting like guy pants guy shorts with tall socks. Unfortunately, I don't have those. Um, I think what I'm gonna end up doing instead, I could probably raid my husband's closet because he has like shorts like that. I actually have these skinny jeans. He also likes to wear Crocs a lot. I do not have any Crocs. I in fact make fun of him for wearing Crocs, but he has like bright colored shoes and his Crocs are like these special edition like anime ones. They are also orange, but I'm gonna go with my bright green chucks. I do have to stop at Walmart to grab a couple items to take over for the birthday parties. We're gonna go look at the Crocs because I was very close. There was one day very recently this past week where I was like, you know what? It it Crocs would kind of be nice right now. And then I was like, nope, nope, they're not nice. They are not a nice shoe, but you know what? Maybe they would be really useful, but I don't think I could pay more than like five bucks for a pair. I think I'm going to strike out, but we'll see. Okay, we're almost there, but we need some accessories. Uh, So <laughs> I did my hair like this because he has like, he has like a mohawk, he doesn't really wear his mohawk, but it's like shaved on the sides and stuff like that. And he'll like brush it forward and put a hat on. So, and he always has these really cool like anime hats. I don't have any anime hats. I went sorting through my kids stuff. I feel like this one's definitely a little bit more destiny. And he has this, he has this one Naruto hat that has like, I don't know if it's Naruto, I don't know. It's some sort of anime thing and it has something on the bill underneath. So it kind of like sits like that. But like the bright colors remind me of Dustin. So we're, we're getting there. Another thing he really likes to do is he wears a lot of jewelry. I'm gonna wear my one anime necklace that I have. This is a, um, this one's definitely vibing. I feel like this one just goes with so many different outfits. Oh, you know what else would be really cool? My angelic rune one. But now we're gonna go with this because it has like a thicker chain. It's a little bit chunkier. So got my bling. I think he has bracelets. I can't really recall, but sometimes he has bracelets. So I'm gonna bring these out and he's gonna probably think this is hilarious because I know at least in his younger days too, he was very kind of like gothic punk rock kind of style more so than he did. And I have these that I had I wore in high school. So I have this one. It's from a band Thursday. These were really popular and like, like, I cannot believe I used to wear this. It is so thick. Oh, I'm gonna push this up on my arm a little bit though like that. Or I have this one. I do still really like this one. Maybe I'll put that one in the other one. I don't think he overdoes it anymore. I just can't recall what his bracelets are like. I could wear both or I should just wear one. I might take this one off. It's so uncomfortable, but like, I feel like, I feel like this is gonna make him laugh. I don't know. Ugh, do I do it? Okay. So let's get the whole the whole look. All right, so we got the hat, the vest, the orange shirt, the jewelry. We have the bright colored shoes. Oops, sorry, not those ones. 
And this moment is just honestly too epic. I think I'm going to have to get the Crocs and some tall socks. My son has some bright orange Pez socks. So I'm thinking we're gonna do it. We're gonna, we're gonna bite the bullet. We're gonna get some fucking foam <laughs> shoes. <laughs> And to top it off, which this is kind of funny too because we are talking about this yesterday, but to top it off, I've got my Nintendo Switch, okay? He is like one of the biggest gaming adults that I know of. I mean, that's questionable, but <laughs> he's one of the biggest gamer people that I know. And we have recently decided to select a game to play together. Me, Dustin, Cherish, and probably our kids are going to want to join in with us. I don't know. It's about it, we're going to connect to Discord and all play a game together and I'm actually very very excited about this. I haven't played games for a really long time. I just think that it will kind of having friends to play with might really kind of get me back into like playing games some more. So, I didn't think about doing this vlog until right now. So we're already kind of like two days behind. So let's play a little bit of catch up. It's been a very busy weekend. Friday was basically day as usual. Kids went to school. Uh, both of the kids after school activities were canceled. I had a little bit of a scare because my son's friend was going to rely on us to give him a ride home. And Michael didn't go on the field trip. I didn't know there was a field trip. The friend went on the field trip Michael came home and Michael told me that his friend had a different ride home and I'm like, okay. So I'm getting ready for my competition. So my my Taekwondo competition was Friday night. So I'm sitting there getting ready, thinking about where we're gonna stop for dinner on the way and everything. And um, his aunt texts me and was like, so I got home and he's not here. What happened? I'm like, Michael, what is going on? Like, this is really scary. So that was a lot to have to figure out. All good news, the bus for the field trip was just running massively late and we were able to track down the friend and everything. But yeah, I don't think I wanna be responsible for giving other kids rides home because I'm like, I was feeling incredibly responsible. That was scary. Then I had my tournament. Then we went ahead and I did pretty well. There wasn't a whole lot of competition. There's never that many women in my group. It was still really fun. I did pretty well. Yeah, and I don't really have any pictures of myself, but I have, I did get a couple of medals. So that's always kind of fun. Then Saturday morning, really early in the morning, 8.30, Aaron had his competition and man, the competition was fierce. I was so proud of him. There was eight kids total he was competing against. Yeah. <laughs>
gold for board breaks he got silver for forms i'll show some videos up here too because it's really cool and then sparring was just really really tough he was the shortest one everybody all the parents i was sitting next to were just like oh my god it's got to be so hard like he's so little these kids have like so much strong like farther reach on him he had to spar three rounds back to back to back they do give him like a 30 second break in between rounds so he can catch his breath but i'm like by the third round i'm not i'm not surprised like he was just already so burnt out and tired so yeah, even though he didn't get a medal for sparring, he did absolutely fantastic. Yeah, after he was done sparring, I had to go over there and give him a little pep talk because I could see it on his face. He was feeling pretty disappointed in himself. I'm like, Aaron, you did amazing. Like, you did, you worked so hard and your technique was great. You just, you can't help, Some sometimes you can't help it. Those kids were just so much taller than you. Like, all of us over there sitting down watching the woman next to me. I've never seen her before in my life. And she's rooting you on. Like, everyone was, people walking by were watching his match and just being like, oh my gosh, it's gotta be really hard being so small. And he just, he went for it. He was not intimidated or scared or anything. And he just, we were so, so proud of him. It was really Really fun to watch that was that and then I think that was about it and then today we basically just got back we were at my friend's house uh, her son for her son's birthday party and that was really fun and guess what I just met two amazing women well I've met them before for but today we really got into it we got into talking about Sarah J Mass books they read all of Akatar. one of the women read Throne of all of Throne of Glass she just finished it and she's like trying to get everyone else that she knows to read them and then the other woman is working on Throne of Glass. So we had a lot of fun talking about that. And one of the ladies, one of the women sent me this link. There's going to be a Court of Thorns and Roses ball event. It's supposed to be pretty expensive, like over $100. But you get dressed up, dinners included, drinks included. I guess they're supposed to have some other events. 
but it's all, it was supposed to all be decorated like Throne of uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm like, I might have to go to that. I might have to like really seriously consider forking out the money for that. Like it might, it might be really fun. I had a really good time talking to them about books and I decided to dress like my friend. Yeah. So what I didn't show you is when I showed up there, my son Michael was like, hey Dustin, I would like to introduce you to Dustin. And he's like, he just sat there and started laughing. He's like, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> Funny. And he goes, you know what? Actually, I'm really flat. You dress like me. I'm like, yeah, of course. I wouldn't dress like someone I didn't like. But now it is officially spring break. The kids are off. We do still plan to go to the gym. We're kind of undecided whether or not we want to kind of go to classes later in the day or if we want to just knock it out at the beginning of the day. I feel like if we wait, we're probably not going to end up going. <laughs> We'll see how it goes. Aaron and I are still picking up Taekwondo in the evenings, but then during the day, I think we're probably just gonna chill. I was thinking about like, we should probably go out and do something, you know, go on a walk or a hike or something. But I think we are gonna end up doing some stuff coming up over next weekend. So we might just spend the first three days really just kind of recouping and chilling and not putting a lot of pressure to go out and do stuff. I know Michael has been putting in the work at school. I do think that he really needs and enjoys just um, that lounging at home, playing his games and stuff. He probably really needs that for his mental health and I have work to do, okay? First of all, I have the TBR basket vlog. I have not read that much more of that book. Oh my God. I think I've read like 20 pages of this book. I would really like to read this book. I looked to see if there's any audio books to accompany it but there's not, of course. So that one I definitely have to read the physical edition. Then I'm also reading Chain of Thorns. I started the vlog for that like two or three days ago, the same day I started the vlog for this other one, but I haven't got to read since then. That one I can listen to on audiobook. Once I sit down and get into it, it's gonna go really fast. All right, I've made it 67 pages. I know that's not like a huge dent. I did want to go ahead and start this game that my friend and I have decided that we're going to start up and play together. So I needed to create my account, get into it. You know, there's always like a little bit of a storyline when you first get into it before you can get into the world. I wanted to play a little bit of this game. So I decided to switch over and listen to an audiobook I have going on called Starlings. I'm kind of in the air about it. I just need to give it a little bit more time. I'm losing my voice again. I can feel it. Our main character is having to live with somebody of her family. It's like her aunt or something. Somebody in the family's house that she barely knows. And then her mom's just like, oh, by the way, you're going to stay here. And she leaves. She just leaves her there. And she's so understandably, she's very upset. Um, and then the aunt is like, like, we need to talk. There's a lot of things that you don't know. In the meantime, like her aunt has to like go take care of some business and she will be back soon. This sounded really intriguing because it said for fans of House of Hollow and some other book that I, I was, I was liking. It's supposed to be like dark and kind of creepy vibes. So I'm kind of waiting for it to pick up, but I know I'm being a little impatient with it. I'm gonna go play a game. Hey, can you do me a favor and get your laundry? Put it in the hall for me. My legs are like spaghetti. When I'm done making my list here, um, I'm gonna go downstairs and I'll start some breakfast and start some laundry. Good morning, it's Monday and it's going on 11 o'clock already. Now that I look at the time, I'm kind of panicked. I don't know why. We just woke up really late today. We definitely needed the extra sleep. Today we're going to be focusing on cleaning up the house a little bit. I need to clean my room. I'm going to be listening to an audiobook while I clean and Treasure Island. I should probably read Treasure Island this morning. Anyways, and then I have, then I have a list of videos that I do need to uh, work on and some other activities that I need to work on. So when I'm finished with all of the housework and stuff like that, I am going to sit down and read some of the Ravens. Oh, all right. Good afternoon. It's Monday and I'm kind of working on, well, I'm, I needed to check in with my planner a little bit and get some cleaning tasks done, start some laundry, but I'm finally here sitting down with Ravens. I have just made it to page. Uh, so I'm about 75 pages in. How many pages are in this? Oh, 394. These are author's notes. Hold on. Oh, acknowledgements. All right. So 389. So just under 400 pages. 
Anyways, um, I'm into page 75 and so far it is so good. We just got into, uh, so we have our two main characters, Vivi and Scarlet. They really don't know each other still at this point. Scarlet, as we know, is an established raven. She is really trying to up the ranks in that. She like wants to have office position. I think it's called office positions. She wants like more responsibility. So she's actually going to be the event planner for the upcoming year. And then we're also following Vivi as she's getting settled, moved into her dorm room and settled into her new school. I just realized Scarlet is also dating this guy named Mason. And we apparently Scarlet is under the the impression that they had this plan they were gonna they had their life set out for them in Scarlett's mind but he decided to go and take a summer abroad and stay in hostels so he comes and tells Scarlett about his trip and she's like ew hostels like I hope you don't have bed bugs obviously he has changed a little bit over the summer where he's not as living the life of luxury and he's kind of seeking out the more freeing alternative kind of lifestyle and he wants to kind of see where that takes him. He wants that freedom of not knowing where he's going to stay, what he's going to do. Kind of like more nomadic or whatever. So Scarlett is definitely feeling that something is off. Then we go over to Vivi's perspective and... I just, she runs into this guy again at breakfast that she met on her first day when she was lugging her bags, bags to her room. And would you know, it's Mason. They have this like banter between each other and I just think it is so fun and cute. And like she was getting waffles for breakfast and she was kind of making a mess. So Mason comes to like save the day and um he makes her up this like ridiculous waffle and she's like that's disgusting and he's like well you'll have to tell me how it is so she like invites him to sit with her so he's gonna have breakfast with her i have a feeling it's gonna make it back to scarlet well we could see where this is going so i don't really want to give more spoilers but i don't feel like that's a huge spoiler oh it kind of is isn't it i'll decide later if we keep that in there yeah, so far so good. I feel like this is starting to gain a little bit more momentum for me. 153 pages. Going strong. It's time for me to go get my laundry out of the dryer, but I am about halfway through. And this is so good. I am so, I am enjoying this so much. At first we had this kind of like Mean Girls drama going on, but I think we're turning in a different direction and I'm kind of, I'm like so pleased with that direction. I think that it's giving this book a lot more meaning for me. Like I would have fun if it was going in this direction that I thought it was going, but I think when you give your characters a lot of dynamic, getting into some backstory between our two girls that were kind of on opposite sides a little bit. I'm really, really liking both of our characters and I'm loving that they're kind of, Scarlet has been very, very cold towards Vivi, but the ice is thawing and I'm really, really loving it. Oh yeah, something else I'm really loving is the magic. Something else I'm really, really loving is the sorority life. They keep having all these different like trials and events to see which girls are going to pass into being permanent pledges. Also a mystery of a girl named Gwen kind of happening and evolving in the background and it's kind of our key into some other thing that happened and only two girls are in on what the truth of this story is. We're kind of unveiling the mystery of all of this behind everything. Also on top of it is the magic. So they can like call upon their their powers or whatever and it's very flashy like flames and all that kind of stuff. But then behind everything, it's also kind of traditional witchcraft as far as like using different herbs and gems and candles and reading spells bell books and using tarot cards all of that sort of things all right page 206 we have completed who are the new initiates into the ravens uh, my son is telling me that he is bored uh i know that he really wanted me to play this game on roblox called doors i just cannot i watched him play it for a while and i just i can't focus on it i won't be able to give it my full 
attention. We'll get back to this later. I'm actually really surprised how far I've made it. I'm at 200, so just under 200 pages to go. I don't know, because it's already six o'clock, so I don't know if I'll be able to finish it tonight. I mean, I guess it depends on what Aaron decides he wants to do. And then I do probably need to figure out what we're doing for dinner. Oh, that's right. I wanted to fry up some fish. I think we're going to go to the rec center tomorrow. He wants to go to the rec center and swim. So um, we'll probably go check that out tomorrow. We have things to do tomorrow. And then, uh, yeah, we'll catch up later. Today is Wednesday? No, today's Tuesday. Another, I didn't wake up quite as late this morning. I woke up a little bit earlier. Wait, what time did I wake up? So I woke up about 7.30ish, 8 o'clock um but it's definitely been like a slow morning i had to play some catch up on my reading tracker i reorganized all of my goodread shelves that took a little bit of extra time this morning not as long as i would have actually expected it to while i was doing that i actually listened to another book called unfiltered that's lily collins memoir yeah and then i made lunch and everything for the kids and went grocery shopping so, you know, getting some things done, but I am here now at, what is it, almost 3 o'clock? It's like 2.30, 3 o'clock now. Let's go ahead and close out this vlog by talking about the Ravens. I don't know what's happened in the last couple of weeks, but my video files are all over the place. So disorganized, I'm having to like restart project. <laughs> And it has been really tough working on this vlog for the last couple days, trying to piece together everything, and it just feels very disorganized. So I just need to be a little bit more diligent. I apparently just cannot wear myself so incredibly thin with too many projects. So anyways... We need to close out this vlog and basically just say that I really enjoyed my time reading The Ravens. I did go ahead and check out the second book called The Monarchs on Libby. And I guess I can't really say anything else about how it ended. I would say that it definitely ended in a much different place than it started out. We did kind of, it kind of feels like a complete book. So I'm really not sure where they're going to be going with The Monarchs. I almost wonder if they aren't going to have, it seems like the sort that they were a part of had a really bad reputation. There was a lot of dark secrets and it kind of seemed to be built off of these secrets. So I'm wondering if the Monarchs isn't going to be like the next year and when Scarlet kind of takes over, is she going to rebrand them and start out with a new perspective? Are they going to banish certain types of magic and stuff like that? Or are we going to maybe go into the past and maybe a different generation who maybe started out the sorority and maybe like kind of an origin story and like way where it went wrong um it'll be very interesting to find out or maybe it'll be like a rival sorority and or something like that because i don't really see how they're going to completely not be the ravens anymore and be the monarchs so I don't know. I don't know. I am very excited to see where it's going to go. I did kind of want to touch base on some negative reviews. There was actually, I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised there aren't more reviews about this book. Um, it didn't seem to take off maybe like some others. And I think it's because there is a bit of a stigma around sororities to begin with. And then I completely understand where people are coming from when they talk about, like there was a couple of reviews that said something about how they they. DNF to the book from the beginning and I do understand that because it almost seems like it falls into the sorority pitfall of like girls and very gonna be kind of kind of sets itself up that it's going to be very superficial like that uh especially when they introduce the reason Scarlet has to not like Vivi over a boy and I think that we're definitely so over that kind of trope like I said about midway through it does kind of start taking a different avenue it does kind of shift and do something completely different and we end up with a close group of girlfriends and I think that I really enjoyed that and I wish that some people who had started out the novel and decided it was not for them had given it a little bit more of an opportunity because I think that it takes that stigma and changes it and that's really what we want to see so anyways Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you soon for the next TBR basket.